you mentioned, and then certainly in this clip, they talked about the carnivore lifestyle. I actually made notes of a number of things I'd like to rebut or, or comment on in terms of that part of the little clip I watched. If uh, if we have time for me to say a few things about it, I, I'll. Let's let's talk a little bit about the the the, the effects that were that have been said by Saladino and others um, about yep. sulforaphane mm -hmm. being goitrogenic. In other words, having a negative effect on the thyroid. Um, yeah, I have yeah. some comments there, but can you go ahead and, and speak to that? Is sulforaphane a no. goitrogen? No, it's or not. Maybe yeah, not sulforaphane uh, itself, but yeah, iso a certain isothiocyanate. If you want to go yeah, so, so so it's it's not, and and nor are broccoli sprouts when eaten in moderation, nor are glucoraphanin-rich supplements. Um, mature broccoli. I mean, this is a this is this is a long story, but mature broccoli. Broccoli produces different glucosinolates in different phases of its lifestyle, and market stage broccoli or heads of broccoli, florets, do have things called indole glucosinolates. And when they are acted on by myrosinase, they can form um, they form unstable intermediates, and they can form compounds which can be toxic or goitrogenic, um, and maybe even promote certain cancers. Um, depending upon if they're administered before or after a person gets exposed to the carcinogen. There's a lot of literature on cancer on, um, uh, based on animal studies on that. And I think the jury is still out on the beneficial effects of eating of those compounds. But the byproducts of indole glucosinolate metabolism are, um, uh, among others, are things called um, indole-3-carbonyl and diindole-methane. It's really the subject, for, I think, for another uh, another discussion, um, but in, but I want to bring it back to broccoli sprouts and sulforaphane. And so we did this 12-week study in China that I told you about. Um, well, uh, collaborators, I, I'm not an author of this, uh, co-author of this most recent study, but they took some of the, they took the blood samples from this 12-week study where we, we gave them sulforaphane from broccoli sprouts. Um, and looked at indicators of thyroid, uh, thyroid status, hormone status, and autoimmune status, um, and found absolutely no negative effects on um, thyroid function. So that's three months of continuous ingestion of sulforaphane. That's definitely the longest effect that's a study that's looked at thyroid specific th uh, effect, potential side effects. But this is the auth first author's name is Chartum Pekis, and it was 2019. And um, you know, th this is this is someone whose specialty is thyroid uh, thyroid function. He's published uh, quite widely on it, and there was no effect. So, um, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, that was a great study. I, I mean, three months is a long time, and you certainly would think that after three months of taking continuous broccoli sprout extract every day. If there was going to be a negative effect on the thyroid, you would see it after three months. Um, yeah. Moreover, the, in 2018, there was a very long-term animal study in rats, where um, there were two groups of rats. There were some rats that were um, that had hypothyroidism, drug-induced hypothyroidism, um, mm -hmm. and then there was uh, an iodine deficient group of rats, and mm -hmm. they were they were given broccoli sprouts, uh, freeze-dried or whatever, you know, broccoli mm -hmm. sprout extract. And mm -hmm. not only was there no harmful effect on the thyroid, even in iodine deficient animals, um, mm -hmm. so in terms of their high, uh, thyroid homeostasis, so their TH, uh, their, the thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. their T3, mm -hmm. T4 were all the same. In the yeah. animals, in the rats that had hypothyroidism, there was a beneficial effect from the broccoli sprouts in the thyroid gland, an antioxidant effect that was beneficial. So. To say that it's a goitrogen and going to have negative effects on the on the on the thyroid, it's 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 quite funny because you you see this sort of echo chamber uh, meme going around, uh, particularly in groups that are anti-plant, um, and they just have it all wrong, a complete lack of understanding, and and yeah. not even looking at actual good data. So yeah, well, you know, it, interestingly, the, um, this persists in the medical community too. So in, in one of our studies, the, the autism study that we published in 2014, um, the, there were questions from the IRB, which is made up of, among other things, physicians, um, about the potential for thyroid, thyroid issues and were we going to monitor thyroid chemistry? And, and we did. And we 
ha went through the same explanation sort of that I just did with you. Um, and so in that study, after the, the 12 week, 12 week study with a follow up um, or 16 week, I guess, uh, I have to review my own papers, but um, daily consumption, this was with autistic kids, not perfectly uh, nor healthy subjects, but um, there were there were we followed thyroid chemistry and as i recall there were a couple of times when thyroid uh, function was flagged uh and they wound up being in in placebos uh those <laughs> that are getting placebo so um yeah i mean it's a concern that keeps on coming up but with market stage broccoli it's it's a valid question to ask can you get too much market stage broccoli perhaps yeah yeah but um and there are areas where um uh, goiter is endemic and those people eat a hell of a lot of cabbage um right but there also are certain things like arsenic in the soils there so but um, cabbage right yeah. exactly i mean there's yeah. a lot of confounding factors and cabbage is not broccoli sprouts exactly. uh, as you mentioned there's exactly. hardly any glucoraphanin in cabbage exactly. um, yep. so uh the the other question yep. also was related to saladino and the question was how do you respond to Paul Saladino's claims on um, Joe Rogan's podcast that the risks of sulforaphane outweigh the benefits? Okay, are we? Do we have from now till close? Uh, till till eleven thirty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've got okay. we've got fourteen minutes. Okay, so I have I made a, just a short uh, little list of nine points. Um, I don't want to go through them in detail, but I, let me let me just sort of tick them off, I guess. So. Um, I think on multiple levels, it's bad advice. Uh, to the, the, the carnivore lifestyle uh, is bad advice. Human beings didn't evolve as, con as carnivores. We're omnivores. That means we eat a variety, um, vegetable and, and meat. Um, and you know, this is, this is a product of evolution. You can look at tooth and mouth and jaw structure and all sorts of other anatomical things. It's clear we didn't evolve to be carnivores. Um, and I think a self-anointed fitness uh, and or nutrition guru is not going to change the course of human evolution in uh, a generation. And, you know, I call them sensationalist claims or not, but the bottom line is there is there is certain dogma, scientific dogma and evolution, uh, our evolution as human beings um, is something that they're not going to be able to rewrite. Um, uh, so anyway. There's an abundance of peer, so th this is I you and I agreed we weren't going to talk politics on this but this is I feel like a politician that was first point second point there's an or number two there's an abundance of peer-reviewed scientific literature showing dietitian fruits and vegetables and especially cruciferous vegetables are good I'm not aware of credible long-term studies supporting carniv carnivorous lifestyle uh, or carniv the carnivore approach for humans three. The risks to eating everything, um, and certainly for you know varieties, the spice of life. Um, certainly, uh, eating broccoli sprouts only to the exclusion of everything else would be terrible for you. Um, so, but that's not what anybody's advocating. Um, uh, point four: uh, studies of phytochemicals in isolation and in fight in um, uh, food matrices and in limited combinations with other phytochemicals, vitamins, minerals, et cetera, show almost without exception that yes, some things are frank toxins. Think about nicotine. Um, uh, they're toxic at pretty much any level and the toxicity goes up. Most, most many phytochemicals, not most, but many phytochemicals have a U-shaped eff uh, effect curve, a hormesis or a hormetic effect. So spanning from no effect at very low concentrations to perhaps benefit or satisfying a requirement to harm or toxicity at the highest level. Um, you know, everything's toxic at some level. Water is, sugar is, salt is, and sulforaphane is. Um, so I think the evidence is overwhelming though that, that eating a lot of broccoli or broccoli sprouts is not, is, is not harmful for you. Um, uh, there, there's, we talked about the, the, the extensive evidence of all sorts of pathways that are upregulated, protective pathways. Um, it's thoroughly documented in the literature and the subject of many clinical studies now, good clinical studies and some bad ones. Um, number six, long-term consumption um, of sulforaphane-rich broccoli sprout beverages, we've talked about, have been shown not to have negative effects. 
including on thyroid function. Um, number seven, let me look at my notes. Um, yeah, okay, Me, um, meat only diets. Think about it. Do you get a lot of fiber from a meat only diet? Duh, no. Um, what about fiber and colon cancer? Do you get a lot of vitamin C from a meat only diet? No. Um, think about scurvy. Um, do you get too much iron on a meat only diet and therefore more oxidative stress? Or at least unless you're unless you're uh, eating only grass-fed meats, yeah. Um, are, is a meat-only diet pro-inflammatory? Well, maybe. So there are a lot of negatives that I'm not the world's expert on. I'm not claiming to be, but um, I think on balance uh, they speak to extreme caution and endorsing that sort of lifestyle. Um, and then I just finally, one of your one of your members, one of your listeners, made a comment which I'd like to read. Um, and I agree with it. And and it's it was Brad. Hi, Brad, if you're there. And you said Dr. Saladino made claims that are many claims that are not backed up by most of the scientific community or gold standard peer reviewed studies. While someday some of his claims may be proven correct, he seems to have cur currently have very flimsy evidence. There are no long lived cultures that live on a predominantly meat based diet. Um, true. I think end of story. And we actually have time for some other questions, so that would be great. <laughs> so <laughs> and we could talk more about it, but I, I think I think the point's been made by both you and me that this is not something that uh, people ought to flock to. Uh, 